Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Wenger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. And he's going to take your ashes, and he's going to make something beautiful out of those ashes. Remember Nehemiah's wall. It was burned. It was rubbish. It was nothing. And they came and rebuilt the wall and filled in the gaps. And they strengthened the city by building this wall and the enemy came to attack. The enemy came to destroy. But they built on one hand, they constructed on one hand, and they fought the enemy on the other hand. And Nehemiah, hallelujah, was not duped, was not tricked by what Sanballat and Tobiah, hallelujah, were trying to do to destroy him and kill him and weaken him and put fear in his heart for him to stop building the wall. So praise the Lord. We're actually going to read from Esther today because, hallelujah, God raised up beautiful Esther. She was an orphan. She had no mother. She had no father. All she had was her cousin, Mordecai, and God put her in a miraculous place. Hallelujah. And the book of Esther is so much about God's timing. You know, she said, I want to have a banquet for Haman and you, O oh my king, King Ahasuerus. And praise the Lord, she had the first banquet, and then she said, come to the second banquet. Hallelujah. She didn't say anything. Remember, at this point, um, Haman wanted to kill all the Jews and had sent out this decree. But, praise the Lord, between the first and the second banquet, Haman, praise God, um, goes home and says, I want to kill Mordecai on the gallows. And the king goes home and can't sleep. And he reads the Chronicles and he realizes that Mordecai has saved his life. And then that morning, the king meets with Haman and says, what are we going to do for the one that the king delights to honor? And of course, Haman thought it was he. And he said, oh, put on the king's robe and, and ride him around on his horse and bow down before him. And, and the king's like, yes, you need to do that for Mordecai. So now the king's heart was softened for Mordecai, for Mordecai's people. And then at this second banquet, he was open and receptive to what Queen Esther was going to say. Hallelujah. It just always amazes me and astounds me. God's timing is perfect. You don't have to push. You don't have to manipulate because if you're going to do that, then you're going to destroy the work that God is doing and that people are going to shut the door on you because you're in the flesh. You're not moving with the Spirit of the Lord. You're so self-centered on yourself rather than doing the will of the Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray right now. Oh, God, we just thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Oh, God. God, we give you glory and honor and praise. Jesus, we want to glorify your name. We want to exalt your name. Let your power be released even now, Father God. Those who are hurting, those who are destitute, those who are hungry, those who are dying, Father God, we speak life, life, life in the name of Jesus. We speak breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, that every power of darkness, every spirit of sin, every spirit of addiction is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every judgmental spirit, every critical spirit is broken now in Jesus' name. Oh God, we just humble ourselves before you. We thank you, Father God, that you are moving, that you are working in our lives, oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to read from Esther chapter 1, starting at verse 1. God is so good. He just sets everything up. He's just a, a mighty God. He's a holy God. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Also, if you would like to um, watch 
on Facebook Live, praise the Lord, every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. You go to Facebook, you go to thecrosstv.com, and you can see my show. And so, praise Jesus, I have it down now. And praise the Lord, and then I share it, and then we post it, and everybody can see it. I have two Facebook accounts. One is Gemma Winger, and one is Gemma M. Winger. So I share it with both. So that's a blessing that Cross TV provides that. And they have brand new internet, the fastest available, so that my HD shows will not be interrupted. So praise the Lord for that. God is good. So Esther chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even to Ethiopia, over 127 provinces. King Ahasuerus, 127 provinces. Hallelujah. From India to Ethiopia, he had a lot of power. He had a lot of authority. And God put Esther in that position right next to him. But remember, Queen Vashti was asked to come because he was basically partying, hallelujah, for approximately 120 days, and he was inviting all the nobles to come together, praise the Lord, to have a good time. And then the following seven days, he asked Queen Vashti to come and show forth her beauty, but she refused. And at that point, he had to talk to his wise men, and they said, she's going to be an example that nobody's going to respect their husbands. You have to move her away, and you have to put somebody in her place who's better than she is. And again, that's a very, very serious message, that if God has put you in a place of authority, of power, if God has lifted you up, but you're not doing your job, hallelujah, you're getting drunk, you're, you're addicted to pain medication. You're addicted to drugs. You're abusing your privileges. You're abusing the people around you and not treating them with respect. God will remove you. God will take you down and he will put his man or his woman of the hour. He will put that person who has a pure heart, who has a holy heart, who is not concerned about the things of the world, but is concerned about serving the Lord. So God is looking at your heart. Are you interested in exalting yourself? Are you going to exalt the name of the Lord? So King Ahasuerus was over 27 provinces. And it says, In the third year of his reign, he made a feast to all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces, being before him. And he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even 180 days. It was 180 days. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So that was a, a big party. That was a long time partying. And he was going to show off his kingdom. You know, we love to get together. We love to meet with friends and, and have a great time. But he was going to show off his treasuries and, and his wealth. So praise God for 180 days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small seven days, so seven more days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black. Hallelujah. They drank in vessels of gold. And there was royal wine in abundance. Hallelujah. In verse 9, also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Verse 11, so then, praise God, the king was merry, and he commanded, praise the Lord, to bring his chamberlains, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. And Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. I mean, how, how difficult could that have been? But God 
hardened her heart because he had somebody else in mind. God will shut a door so that he can open the door that he wants open. I think of people who really work hard and all she was asked to do was to come to a party and show her beauty and she refused. So the king was very angry and praise the Lord, he decided that, you know, all the women are going to despise their husbands. So, of course, he had to get rid of her. So she came no more before King Ahasuerus. And the king gave her estate to another that was better than she was. Hallelujah. We need to look at our heart. We need to look where God has placed us. How he is raising us up. Have you let it go to your head? Are you walking in pride and envy and jealousy and competition? Are you here to exalt the name of the Lord? So God just removed Vashti out of the way. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mamukin. Now, hallelujah, they have to find fair young virgins. Fair young virgins for the king. And the Lord makes you that beautiful young virgin spiritually. Hallelujah. He washes you. He cleanses you. He makes you beautiful. I mean, it was six months of cleansing and purification. And then it was six more months of cleansing and purification. And God wants to cleanse you. And God wants to purify you. And God wants to make you beautiful. He says that he makes all things beautiful in his time. And he will do that for you as you wait on him, as you glorify his name. So, hallelujah. It's very interesting. In Esther chapter 2, verse 1, after these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti. He calmed down. We think differently when we calm down. And what she had done and what was decreed against her. And so he said, let fair young virgins be sought for the king. And let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom. That they may gather together all the fair young virgins. Praise God. And then skipping down. Uh, for their, and let their things for purification be given them. So they had to be purified to go in to the king. We need to be purified to enter into that holy of holies. Even it's interesting that the people had to stand at the outer court unless the king held the golden scepter to bring them into the inner court. We see such a parallel with the kingdom of heaven. Our king, we have to go in and purify ourselves, but hallelujah, we have to be worthy to enter into that inner court and he needs to invite us in. So we want to go deeper, deeper, deeper into that inner court. And the maiden, Esther 2, 4, which pleases the king, be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So Mordecai was a Jew. And he told Esther, who was also named Hadassah, don't show the king your heritage. Don't reveal that you are from the Jewish line. Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And remember, there was, hallelujah, that Babylonian captivity that the Jews were carried away by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. There was a remnant that stayed in Jerusalem, and there was a remnant that came to Babylon. So we see that, praise Jesus, that Mordecai had been carried away from Jerusalem 
Jerusalem with the captivity in the Babylonian captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. And remember, God allowed that because of the sin of the Jewish people, that they weren't serving the Lord. Verse 7, and he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. Well, if his uncle's daughter, hallelujah, therefore they were cousins. Mordecai wasn't her uncle. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful. God created her fair. God created her beautiful. Hallelujah. She had to be the most beautiful, but she had to be beautiful on the outside as well as the inside. Praise God. And God prepared her. God was raising her up for such a time as this to save the Jews from utter annihilation, from utter slaughter, from utter destruction. And remember, Haman was upset with Mordecai because he wouldn't bow down. Hallelujah. And so he wanted to kill all the Jews. And so he talked to the king and said, I'm going to give you 10,000 talents for your treasury. And the king's like, sure, that's great. He said, he lied. Oh, this is a people. They don't follow your rules. They, they don't do what you tell them to do. And he lied about the Jews. And so the king's like, okay. And he sealed it with the, the seal of the Medes and the Persians, which could not be revoked even by the king. And then it's so interesting that then Haman and King Ahasuerus, they went and had a drink and hung out. You know, they've just decreed the death of all these people, and now they're going to, you know, become drinking partners. We can see the heart of these people. So she was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Praise God, the orphan who became a queen. Hallelujah, the orphan who became a queen. So no matter what state you find yourself in, if your heart is pure before God, if you're willing to serve him, if you're willing to do whatever he tells you to do, God will raise you up. God will lift you up. But Esther had to do something very important. She had to go in to the king when she was not called. And if you're not called and he does not extend that scepter to you, you will be killed. But she was willing to be killed on behalf of her people. And that shows her heart. She wasn't in love with being the queen. She wasn't in love with all the stuff. In the midst of all this stuff, in the midst of God exalting her, she still had that pure, humble heart. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also to the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him. And he speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. The king preferred her. Hallelujah. God gave Esther favor in the sight of all that looked upon her. The king preferred her. Delight yourself in the Lord. We want the king to prefer us. We want our God to give us favor. Hallelujah. When people look upon us, we want that immediate favor in Jesus' name. So Esther had not shown her people or her kindred because she was Jewish. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of her purifications accomplished, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors. Six months of purification. We need to purify ourselves before we come into the king. We need to examine our hearts. We need to see if there's any wicked way in us. Have you been lying? Have you not been telling the truth? 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know what's in your heart. And God is dealing with your heart right now. Just submit to him. Just surrender to him because he wants to bless you. He wants to touch you. Hallelujah. And with other things for the purifying of the women. Remember, before Moses went on the mount, the people had to purify themselves. Purification is so important. Getting on our face before the Lord and examining our hearts. Hallelujah. Then thus came every maiden to the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women to the king's house. And skipping down, verse 14, she came in unto the king no more except the king delighted in her and that she were called by name. The king had to call you by name. Hallelujah. I always feel for the ones who got rejected, who the king did not delight in them, and the king did not call them by name. But there's a reason. God has a plan for everybody's life. God raises up those who he's going to raise up, and he brings down those who he's going to bring down. And we just have to surrender, because what is supposed to happen in your life will happen. Hallelujah. God will cause it to come to pass. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can can hinder the blessing of the Lord that is meant to come to you. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain and the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. God wants us to be beautiful on the outside, but he wants our hearts to shine forth. Hallelujah. The inner man, the inner beauty to shine forth to that outward man. Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and the eyes are the windows of the soul. Praise God. That's so powerful. Ever since I was little, I always prayed, Lord, let me obtain favor in the sight of all them that look upon me. And God will do that for you. God will bless you. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the 10th month, which is the month Teba, in the seventh year of his reign, excuse me, to Beth. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Hallelujah. The king loved Esther. Esther, more than all the other women. She obtained grace and favor. You want to make a marriage work? Work on your inner man. Hallelujah. The outer beauty, praise the Lord, it fades. But also, when you're angry at your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, hallelujah, you don't see their outer beauty. They just look ugly to you. Hallelujah. In those times, we need to have inner beauty, inner sacrifice, dying to the flesh, dying to our own wants and our own desires, and letting our spouse or our boyfriend or our girlfriend or even our family member, our friends, hallelujah, have what they want. Praise God. Let that giving attitude shine through. Let the love, let the joy, let the peace shine through. And that's what's going to make a marriage work. The fruit of the Spirit. The patience, the long-suffering, the loving kindness, the goodness. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. God placed her in that arena. Praise Jesus. And he made a great feast unto all his princes, which is typical of our king, and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. 
Esther had not shown her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai. She was obedient. Maybe she didn't understand it, but she was obedient. And God was speaking to me that there's so many times where you have to be obedient. You don't understand what God is doing. You're having a hard time figuring it out, but you have to go on blind faith. You just have to trust him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Tirish, of those which kept the door, were angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it to Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, when they investigated... It was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Hallelujah. So Mordecai heard that there was a plot against King Ahasuerus. He talked to Queen Esther. They investigated, and it turned out to be true. And the two chamberlains were hung. And it was written in the Chronicles of the King. And remember, between the first and the second feast, the king went and read the book of the Chronicles that was written down that completely exposed the plot and showed Mordecai to be pro-king. Hallelujah. Working in his favor, which was exactly the opposite of what Haman had said about the Jews that they were against the king. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will open people's eyes that are blind. Allow him to work. Allow him to move. Esther 3 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. So Haman was number two in the kingdom. He was over all the princes. And Esther took him down. God took him down down this man who was second in charge and for such a time as this God is raising you up let's pray for the fulfillment of the call of God upon your life oh God we cry out to you right now Father God we want to endure we want to persevere Father God we want to have that character that we are not going to compromise that we are not going to give in that we are not going to weaken in the name of Jesus God raise us up as you raise up Queen Esther Father God use us in a mighty way to glorify your name and we rebuke every attack every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus be free be free enter into that holy of holies the king of kings and the lord of lords extends that scepter to you he is doing a great and a mighty work and the lord is saying be patient be patient because he will bring it to pass in his timing Oh, thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And we give you all the glory. He that seeks to save his life is going to lose it. But he who loses his life for the kingdom of heaven's sake will save it. And Queen Esther was willing to lose her life for the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of God. If you'd like to contact me, you can go to my website, gemmawenger.com. I have television shows, and I have my radio show on there as well. I'm on KKLA 99.5, Saturdays at 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Praise the Lord. So please go ahead and go to the website and listen to the archived radio shows. I'm also here on Cross TV every Wednesday at 5 30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm also on Facebook Live at that same time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And I have meetings every Monday night and Friday night. And I have wonderful worship leaders, Pamela and Joey Newman, Michael Krynak, Andrew Ramos, Timothy Tucker. So please come on a Monday night or a Friday night or both. Praise the Lord. We're in the West Los Angeles area. You can get the address on the website. And remember that Jesus loves you and I love you too. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Wenger. And you're watching Beauty for Ashes. <laughs>